It has stood the test of time. God's book, the Bible, still relevant in today's complex world. It is written, sharing messages of hope around the world. What would you say if I told you that there was a lake that had water that was actually pink? Or how about if I told you that there was a mountain with red, blue, and gold rock formations? Or what if I told you that there was a cave that had crystals that grew to over 12 meters high and four meters in diameter? Do they all sound like impossible places to even exist? In fact, all of them are real places on this earth. The Pink Lake is Lake Retba near Dakar, Senegal, not very far from the Cape Verde Peninsula. Its pink color is due to the specific kind of algae growing in the lake. How about those multicolored mountains? They can be found in Gansu, China, and throughout the region there where there are wonderfully red-colored mountains and rock formations. And those huge crystals, they too are reality. They are found in the Cave of the Crystals in Chihuahua, Mexico, a cave that reaches a blistering 58 degrees Celsius at times. But the beauty of these crystals is really amazing. All of these seemingly unreal places are real. They actually exist, even though their description may seem otherwise. But what about a place that is often discussed in religious circles? Heaven. Is heaven for real? People have a lot to say about heaven. Some people even have claimed to have gone to heaven. But what does the Bible say about heaven? Is it a real place? Is it some faraway distant sphere with clouds and babies playing harps? What is this place? The word heaven or heavens appears over 720 times in the Bible. Now it's important to note that the word heaven or heavens can mean several different things. Heaven and earth together can refer to the entire universe. The word heaven or heavens can refer to the sky along with the stars and planets. But it also, the word heaven can mean the home of the righteous. The word can have a literal meaning or a metaphorical meaning at times. For our new series, we will concern ourselves with the literal meaning, the home of the righteous. What is heaven? Sometimes heaven is described without using the word heaven itself. This is the case when Jesus speaks of heaven and the preparations he's making for us there. Notice what he says in John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3. It's a well-known verse that you may have memorized, John chapter 14, verses 1 through 3. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Here, heaven is described as where God dwells and where he wants those who follow him to live as well. Jesus is preparing it for his followers. Now, over the next few moments, we are going to look at a number of Bible texts that describe heaven. Through all of this, we must keep in mind the scripture of Isaiah chapter 64, verse 4. And I love how the old King James Version puts it. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, neither hath the eye seen, O God, beside thee, what he hath prepared for him that waiteth for him. The Bible describes heaven in human terms so we can understand them. But those descriptions fall short of how amazing heaven will be. Ephesians 3.20 says that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. So why even try to understand? Well, the reason it's important is because heaven is an important place. 
And it is a place that none of us want to miss out on. The Bible describes how God will make our final home. In Isaiah chapter 65, verse 17, For behold, I create a new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered or come to mind. It says that he will make something new. In Revelation 21, 1, the Bible describes it in this way. The last book of the Bible, Revelation 21 and verse 1. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Heaven, the home of the righteous, will be the recreated earth. You see, God created this earth over 6,000 years ago, and he created it over the course of six days, and it was perfect, perfect in every aspect. But then sin marred the earth into the situation that we now have today, a very imperfect planet. But a day is coming when God will destroy this earth to make a new earth on which we will live. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 10 says it this way. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Then in the latter part of verse 12 through 13, it says this, the heavens will be dissolved being on fire and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heaven and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Now remember, heaven is God's home and where he wants his followers to live. In the meantime, where is heaven? Where God lives now. The Bible doesn't give us an exact location. It is out in the universe somewhere. In fact, Psalm 14 and verse 2 says this about the reality of heaven. The Lord looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there are any who understand, who seek God. And again in Psalm 33 and verse 13, the Bible says, the Lord looks from heaven. He sees all the sons of men. And then later in the scriptures, in the New Testament, in Acts chapter 1, and in verses 9 through 11, it describes Jesus' ascension from this earth. Listen to these words. Now, when he had spoken these things while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus who was taking up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. So heaven is a real place. In fact, the book of Revelation tells us about heaven now. John looks up and in chapter 21 and verse 2 of the book of Revelation, it describes what he sees when he looks up. Then I, John saw the holy city, new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Where is heaven? It is out there, but Jesus is making preparations there. To make this earth God's home and our home with him, heaven is a very real place. God made earth to be with humankind. But we rebelled and turned away from him. Now he will make it again. Perfect again, but with a guarantee. According to Nahum 1.9, it says this, a place where affliction will not rise up a second time. No more sin. Heaven is a real place where there won't be any sin. No more drive-by shootings. No more car accidents. No more drunk drivers. No more calls at midnight telling us about a son or a daughter. No more. The book of Revelation goes on to tell us what else won't be in heaven. 
and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Heaven is a real place, and it seems just too good to be true. But there won't be any more death, no more goodbyes, no more sudden losses, no more unexpected deaths. None of that will exist. Oh, friend, maybe you've lost a son or a daughter. Maybe you've lost a mother or a father or a brother or a sister. You will never, ever be separated again because in heaven, there is no more death. And because of that, there will be no more sorrow, no more grief. You will never have to mourn again. There will be perfect harmony. Can you picture that in your mind? No crying, no pain. Friends, we will have no need to weep. No more tears of sadness. Everything will be perfect in Jesus. No pain. Unquestionably, there will be no more physical pain, no arthritis, no aches and pains. Are you happy to know that? I know I am. I've had four knee surgeries and I look forward to the day when there will be no more aches and pains. But it's also talking about emotional pain or social pain. Friend, maybe you've been abused. Maybe you've gone through a traumatic time that has left you emotionally damaged. Jesus reaches out his arms of love and tells you, heaven is a real place. And I am preparing that place for you right now. Cling to me, stay close to me, and I will take you there. Friend, don't you want to be there with him? Hebrews 11 and verse 16 is another invitation to you and another invitation for me. But now they desire a better, that is a heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. God has prepared heaven for you. He's prepared it with you in mind. He has made this place. Heaven is a real place for real people like you and like me. Listen to this marvelous description back in the book of Revelation and chapter 21 of what this heavenly city looks like. He showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. Her light was like a most precious stone, like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Also, she had a great and high wall with 12 gates and 12 angels at the gates and the names written on them, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Three gates on the east, three gates on the north, three gates on the south, and three gates on the west. Heaven is a real place, and it has real gates. These gates are not to keep anyone out, but rather are a message for people to come from all corners of the earth and be a part of this place. Three gates to the north, three gates to the south, three gates to the west and three gates to the east, all cry out as an invitation to come and be a part of this beautiful place. But Revelation 21 continues describing this wonderful place. Now the wall of the city had 12 foundations and on them were the names of the 12 apostles of the lamb. And he who talked with me had a gold reed to measure the city its gates and its wall. The city is laid out as a square. Its length is as great as its breadth. And he measured the city with a reed, 12,000 furlongs. Its length, breadth, and height are equal. Then he measured its wall, 144 cubits, according to the measure of a man, that is, of an angel. Heaven is a real place that has a real foundation. And that foundation has the names of the apostles inscribed on it. And the city is a perfect square, 12,000 furlongs. 12,000 furlongs is just over 2,200 kilometers. This means that the city would be just over 550 kilometers per side. Now, one side would be the equivalent of driving from downtown Toronto to downtown Montreal just one side. It would be comparable also to the distance between Calgary and Saskatoon or 
Calgary and Kamloops, each side 550 kilometers and a wall that is almost 64 meters thick. Heaven is a real place. Now listen to the description of some of the actual construction of the city. The construction of its wall was of jasper and the city was pure gold like clear glass. The foundations of the wall of the city were adorned with all kinds of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third chalcedony, the fourth emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth chrysoprase, and the eleventh jacinth, and the twelfth amethyst. The twelve gates were twelve pearls. Each individual gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold like transparent glass. Can you picture the perfect beauty in your mind? Heaven is a real place for real people. And Jesus has prepared all of this for you and for me. Are you excited, friend? No more pollution. No more terrible weather. Absolute perfection. I want you to take just a moment. Think of the best place you've ever been. Ever been in your entire life. Hold that image in your mind. Heaven will be so much better than what you've imagined. It's almost seems unimaginable. In addition to the city of Jerusalem on this earth made new, we will also live in homes that we build in the countryside. Isaiah 65 verses 21 and 22 tell us about what we will build. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree, so shall be the days of my people. And my elect shall long enjoy the work of their hand. Heaven is a real place and it will have real people. We will build real homes and we will plant real gardens and we will enjoy the fruit of our labor. No more will we build our dream home only to have to sell it. No more will we plant a beautiful garden and then have it destroyed by weeds and pests. We will enjoy our lives in this very real place. Our bodies will be new. So we will be able to labor and not experience exhaustion and pain. Philippians 3 verses 20 and 21 describe what will happen to our bodies. Philippians 3 20 and 21. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. Just so we are not mistaken, what was Jesus' glorious body like? Jesus appeared to the disciples after he had risen from the dead and listen to these words from the book of Luke, Luke chapter 24. And he said to them, why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet that it is I myself handle me and see for a spirit does not have flesh and bones. As you see, I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. Jesus was real flesh and real bones, but he was perfect. His lowly body was now made glorious. It would never grow old. He wouldn't grow weary and his body would not stop working. And friends, when we go to heaven, neither will our bodies. Our bodies will be perfect. They will be imperishable. Heaven is real and heaven has real people in it. And in case you haven't gotten the picture, we won't be sitting around on some clouds strumming our harps. Heaven is a real place for real people who have real conversations. 
Notice what Jesus says in, in Matthew chapter 8 and in verse 11. And I say to you that many will come from east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Can you imagine what it will be like to have a conversation with one of the heroes of the Bible? Who is it that you'd like to talk to? Maybe you'd like to talk to Daniel or Jeremiah, maybe Matthew or Mark or, or maybe David or, or Joshua. Who will it be? In addition to all of this, the perfect harmony of heaven will be seen in the animal kingdom as well. Isaiah 11, starting with verse 6, shares this beautiful scene. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the young goat, the calf and the young lion, and the fatling together. And a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze. Their young ones shall lie down together. And the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play by the cobra's hole. And the weaned child shall put his hand in the viper's den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Perfect harmony and perfect peace. No animals eating one another, all of them together enjoying the peace of God. There is one thing in heaven above all else that should attract us. There is one thing above all others that will bring supreme joy. And that, my friends, is the opportunity to meet Jesus. Jesus is the reason that we will be there. He has made the provision for you to go. He has prepared a place for you. And today he's calling you. And he's calling me to come. To come to him, give our life to him, live for him, and be obedient to him. Then the Bible promises that we will receive a crown in heaven. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 8 tell us of that crown. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. What a glorious day that will be. Jesus has paid the price. He has invited you, not as a matter of if you're rich or poor, male or female, young or old. He hasn't made an invitation based on whether you're successful or not. Jesus is calling you. He's calling you to be prepared for heaven, a real place for real people where we will receive a real crown. But friends, we won't take pride in those crowns. We won't glory in the fact that we have those crowns. Revelation chapter four says that those in heaven cast their crowns at the feet of Jesus. Why? Because he paid the price for it all. Jesus calls today. Will you answer? Listen to this song and prayerfully consider the invitation of Jesus. Princes and paupers, sons and daughters, kneel at the throne of grace. Losers and winners, saints and sinners, one day will see his face. And we'll all bow down. Kings will surrender their crowns and worship Jesus, for he is the unfailing love. Mountains. 
streams and the rivers whisper the Savior's name. Awesome and holy, a friend to the lonely, forever his love will will surrender their crowns and worship Jesus, for he is the love, unfailing love, he is the Thank you for watching. Please join us again next week. Until then, remember, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God.